Okay, so last time we uh, we uh, finished up to uh, I think slide number uh, up to this slide number 16. So remember this was the last result that we discussed and the result is uh, if the series, uh, the sum of an as n goes from 1 to infinity is convergent, then uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is 0. So what this is saying is that if a series is convergent, then the uh, terms of the series approach 0. If a series is convergent, then the nth term of the series approaches 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, a lot of the times in exams, I see that people misuse this theorem. So they will say the following. Suppose I, tell, I give you a series and I ask you, uh, uh, determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. A lot of people say this, that they will say that the limit of a n is 0, therefore the series is convergent. Am I making sense? They will say that the limit of a n is 0, therefore the series is convergent. Absolutely wrong, okay? Uh, the statement is, if the series is convergent, then the limit of a n is 0. It doesn't work the other way, okay? However, we could say the contrapositive. What's the contrapositive? The contrapositive is that if the limit of a n is not 0, if the limit of a n is not 0, then the series, the sum of a n as n goes to infinity, 1 to infinity is divergent. This is known as the test for divergence. You are going to use it a lot uh, in your homework, okay? So you could only use this to show that a series is divergent. You cannot use this to show that a series is convergent. This, is, this can only be used to show a series is divergent. So, uh, again, if the limit of a n does not exist or is not equal to zero, then the series, or uh, the sum n going from one to infinity of a n is, is divergent. Uh, everybody understands what I'm saying. Let's look at an example. Um, So let's say, uh, let's look at this example here, that suppose that I have the series n going from 1 to infinity of um, n divided by n plus 1, okay? And the question is, is this series convergent or divergent, okay? Okay, is it, is it, convergent or is it divergent? Uh, and uh, what would you say? Is it convergent or divergent? Well, uh, notice that, so this is, what is my a n here? The nth, the nth term of the uh, series is, is this guy, right? And what's the limit as n goes to infinity of n divided by n plus 1? It's 1, right? The limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 is exactly 1, right? How do I know that? Well, you have done the limits of rational functions so many times, right? Uh, this is n going to infinity, and here I'm going to factor out an n, and this is 1 plus 1 over n, and n cancels out. So as n goes to infinity, the limit is 1. Well, the limit is 1, so it, it is not equal to 0, right? And I just gave you the test for divergence, uh, test for divergence. 
uh, implies that the series and going from 1 up to infinity and over n plus 1 is divergent right the test for divergence says if the limit of an is not zero then the corresponding series uh, is divergent everybody is okay with that any questions on that so in your homework you'll see there are some questions uh, where you have to apply this test for divergence uh, okay um, going back to the slides the last uh, theorem that we need is the following uh, suppose that I have two series the sum of a n and the sum of b n I have two series and both are convergent let's say both of them are convergent okay and if you have two convergent series then we can combine them algebraically and and come up with some new series right for example, I can come up with the series uh, sum of a n plus b n. I can come up with the series sum of a n minus b n. And I can also come up with the series uh, sum of c times a n, where c is a constant. Yeah, if, if, the series of, if the series sum a n and sum b n, if they are convergent series, then 1, 2, 3, all those series are also convergent. And we also have uh, so what would be the sum of uh, uh, what would be the sum of the series uh, given by the sum n going from one to infinity of c a n? Well, it turns out that that's the same as c times the sum of the series with term a n. Everybody's okay. So it means that you can factor out a c, just like you did for integrals. Right? If you have a constant factor in an integral. You can always take it outside of the integral. Same thing. Uh, what's the uh, sum of a n plus b n? Well, that's the same as sum of a n plus the sum of b n. Uh, is everybody okay with that? Uh, any questions on uh, on this uh, theorem? Everybody understands what, what this is saying. We're going to look at an example of how to use this. So this is the end of section 11 too. I'm just going to do an application of this theorem in a bit. Suppose that I have the following problem. Let's say, uh, let's say I have the series uh, n going from 1 to infinity of half uh, to the n minus 1 plus 1 third to the n minus 1. So let's say I have this series, right? Uh, where the general term is given by half to the n minus 1 plus 1 third to the n minus 1. The question is, what's the, w is this series convergent? Uh, and if it is convergent, what's the sum? Well, notice that by our previous theorem, if it is convergent, then I could write this as the sum of half to the n minus 1 plus the sum of 1 third to the n minus 1. Uh, the first series, is that a geometric series? The first one, is that a geometric series? Remember what's a geometric series? A geometric series looks like what? A R to the N minus 1. Right, that's the geometric series. So the first series that we have, is that a geometric series? Yes, right? And what's the sum then? What's the sum? What is A? What is A for the first sum? And what's the common ratio? 
for the first series what's the common ratio R and what's the value of A was that well R is one half one one over two but what is A A is one right same thing on the second one the common ratio R is half sorry no not half one third one third and then A is one as well so what's the sum well our formula says this is A divided by one so remember this is equal to A divided by one minus R right so I would be getting one over one minus a half again I can apply this formula because R in both cases is less than is between negative one and one and for the second one we would be getting one over one minus a third right so what do I get from the first two and how about the second three half okay so what is that is that seven half Okay, so that's, that's how we could have used the uh, last theorem that I gave. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Um, the last theorem says the following. Okay, how many of you have done homeworks from 11.1? Okay, very good. Uh, those of you who haven't done it, uh, you will be in a really big trouble uh, when it comes to the exam or the final. Uh, because, uh, and like I said, uh, if you don't know how to, I mean, even if I allow you to bring all these facts, theorems, formulas in the exam, if you didn't do your homework, I, I can bet thousand dollars that you won't be able to do these problems okay. so don't don't assume that you could do these problems in the exam if you if you don't do your homework uh, okay so uh, this is the uh, this is the end of this section uh, we are going to move on to section 11 11.3 uh, 11 um, but before we we go there we need to cover a topic from chapter 7 <coughs> Uh, section 7.8 and I didn't cover that topic before because we didn't need it at that time but now that we need it in section 11.3 I will uh, make a digression here and and talk about uh, this uh, section uh, 7.8 so first of all what is uh, section 7.8 about this is this is about what we call improper integrals improper integrals and uh, how did we define uh, how did we define uh, uh, integrals uh, integral of a function before remember so far uh, all our integrals were integrals on a closed and bounded interval like integral from 1 to 2 negative 1 to 2 things like that on a bounded interval and also uh, the integrands were usually continuous functions right uh, the question is uh, how do we define integrals so let's say I have a let's say I have a function uh, f of x and and I want to define uh, an integral on an infinite interval so that is let's say integral from a to infinity of f of x dx how would I define uh, an integral over a infinite interval like this um, so we are going to we are going to say that this is defined to be first of all oops uh, first of all we can integrate let's say uh, a to t of f of x dx well that's a finite interval between a, a between a and t and let's say 
uh, t is larger than a. So let's say for any t larger than a, the integral from a to t of f of x dx exists, okay? Let's assume for any t larger than a, the integral from a to t of f of x dx exists. Uh, then how do I define the integral over this infinite interval from a to infinity? Well, we are going to compute the integral from a to t first, and then we are going to take the limit as t goes to infinity. Okay? So that would be the definition of integral from a to infinity of f of x dx. Let's look at an example. Uh, let's say I have the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Okay. So by this definition, what is this integral? What is this integral? Well, by the definition that I have, it's the limit as t goes to infinity, integral from 1 up to t, 1 over x squared dx. Uh, can someone tell me uh, what's the antiderivative of 1 over x squared? So this is equal to what? Uh, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared is? Negative x to the negative 1, which is negative 1 over x. And then these are the limits. And I, if I plug in, if I plug in uh, t, I will be getting negative 1 over t. And when I plug in 1, what do I get? Remember, I have to subtract. So this is what I get when I plug in t. And when I plug in 1, I get, I get negative 1 over 1, right? Uh, everybody's okay? So this is equal to uh, the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, 1 minus 1 over t, right? And that limit is equal to what? As t goes to infinity, 1 over t goes to 0. So I get that the <coughs> limit is 1. So that means, that means we are saying that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx is equal to 1. Okay? Everybody understood what I said? All right, so let's, uh, uh, I want to now go over a few slides. Um, okay, so uh, what's going on with this infinite um, uh, integrals over infinite intervals? Um, so remember uh, the graph of 1 over x squared, right? The graph of 1 over x squared uh, is given by this blue curve, right? Everybody remembers that. Uh, now, let's say 1 is right here, and uh, we are looking at the region below the graph of 1 over x squared uh, to the right of 1. That's an infinite region, right? We are looking at the region uh, below the graph of 1 over x squared to the right of 1. The question you might want to ask is, what's the area of this region? Just because it, ha it is an infinite region doesn't mean it has infinite area. Okay? Uh, so the question is, how should we define the area below the graph of a function like this to the right of some number? Well, Let's look at the following. Uh, if I ask you, hey, what's the, what's the area below the graph of 1 over x squared between 1 and t, what would you say? Forget about anything else I have on the side. I, I have the graph of 1 over x squared. I am looking at the region below the graph between 1 and t. Right? That region, what's the area of that region? 
anybody. What's the area of that region? And which is what? Which is basically the integral from 1 to t, right? But remember, <coughs> the integrals give you area, right? So if I integrate 1 over x squared from 1 to t, that integral gives you the area below the graph between 1 and t, right? You guys remember that from count 1? So the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx, that actually gives you the area below the graph of 1 over x squared between 1 and t. I'm, I'm calling that a of t, right? And we, we, we computed that, and that's 1 minus 1 over t, right? Now, does it make sense that I should be defining the area of the region, of the entire region to the right of 1 as the limit of this area? The, so this is the area between 1 and t. So what should be the area of the entire region to the right of 1? Well, I should define it to be the limit of a of t as t goes to infinity, right? So in fact, the number 1 that we obtained, that's the area of this infinite region. So the limit as t goes to infinity of a of t is 1, and therefore that's the area of the infinite region below the graph of 1 over x squared to the right of 1. Is, every, is everyone okay with that? Everyone understands what, I, what I'm saying? Um, so generally, or the, the, the general definition of the improper integral, so this is called an improper integral. Integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is defined as the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of f of x dx. Um, you know, this works if the integral from a to t of f of x dx exists for, uh, uh, for any value of t, okay, larger than a. And, well, not only that, we can also define what's the integral from negative infinity to a constant d of f of x dx. So how do I define the integral from negative infinity to d of f of x dx uh, as, uh, uh, how, do I, how do I define that? Well, similarly, right? What is that? We take the lower limit to be t now, and then we take the limit as t goes to negative infinity, right? Because it's from negative infinity to b, we replace negative infinity by t, and then we take the uh, limit as t goes to negative infinity. Let's uh, look at an example. Let's, let's do an example. Let's say I have uh, the uh, integral from negative infinity to 0 of e to the x dx. Okay? So, by definition then, this is the limit. I, I, I am going to replace the negative infinity by t, and then I'm going to take the limit as t goes to negative infinity of e to the x dx. What's the antiderivative of e to the x? Uh, it's e to the x, and 0 and t. So if I plug in 0, what do I get? If you plug in 0, you get e to the 0, which is 1, minus e to the what? e to the t. What's the limit of e to the t as t goes to negative infinity? 0, because remember the graph of e to the x? It's like this. So as, as x goes to inf negative infinity, e to the x goes to 0, right? So this is equal to exactly 1. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? All right. Ah, oh, yes. Any questions on what I did? Enjoying the music? <laughs> Uh, there's uh, uh, the theater people. Are, they have a, they have practice and stuff like that upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's really. <good. laughs>
Okay, uh, uh, you should you should all write uh, a letter to the to the administration or the president and complain about this. Okay. Bonus points. All right. So, any any questions on this anymore? Uh, here's. So, so once again, we said that the limit of the uh, integer from negative infinity to d uh, of f over x dx is defined in a similar way. Now, uh, these limits will not exist for many functions. Okay. So when these limits exist, we say that these improper integrals are convergent. When the limits don't exist, we say that these are uh, divergent uh, integrals, okay? So convergent means uh, the limits exist. The divergent means the limits don't exist, okay? We can also define a, a third kind of improper integral, which is integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, in this case, though, we are going to define the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx. We will define that as the integral from negative infinity to a of f of x dx plus a to infinity of f of x dx, provided that the two integrals on the right side exist, okay? The two integrals on the right side exist, and, um, you know, a could be anything as long as they both exist. Okay? You can take A to be whatever you want as long as they both exist. Okay. Uh, any questions on what I said? I'm going to do an example of the third kind by hand in a second. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is what we li live with in our office, huh? Okay, here's a here is an example. Let's say I am looking at the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of one over one plus x squared dx. And since uh, I could pick a to be anything I want, um, I could I will pick a to be zero because that's convenient. So I'm going to pick negative infinity to zero, one over one plus x squared dx plus integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus x squared dx. Uh, the first one would be what the limit as uh, t goes to infinity, uh, negative infinity of t to 0, 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. The second one I'm going to say it is the limit as, uh, let me use a different symbol, s going to infinity, integral from 0 to s of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And anyone knows what's the antiderivative of of 1 over 1 plus x squared? What is the antiderivative? What's the antiderivative? of 1 over 1 plus x squared? No. What does it remind you of? Inverse tangent, right? Inverse tangent. It's the derivative of inverse tangent of x, right? So this is the inverse tangent of x. 
and uh, this would be then the limit as uh, t goes to infinity, negative infinity. Uh, tangent, uh, tangent inverse of zero is what? Zero. And then minus, when you plug in t, you'll just get tangent inverse of t. And plus the limit as s going to infinity, uh, it'll be tangent inverse of s minus tangent inverse of zero, which is zero. Uh, can someone tell me what's the limit of tangent inverse of t as t goes to negative infinity? Who remembers the graph of tangent inverse? The graph of tangent inverse, how does it look like? Okay, no. So the limit as t goes to negative infinity of, that is? What is that? Negative, what? No one. Negative pi over 2, right? Remember the graph uh, of tangent inverse looks like this, where this is, this height is negative pi over 2, this height is positive pi over 2. Right. As t goes to negative infinity, tangent inverse of t goes to <coughs> negative pi over 2, so I get pi over 2 here. Plus, uh, as t s goes to uh, positive infinity, tangent inverse of s goes to positive infinity, uh, sorry, positive pi over 2. So together I have pi. Everybody is okay with that example? All right. Um, okay, so going back to the slides again, um, the, uh, the last definition once again, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx, the same as integral from negative infinity to a of f of x dx plus the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx, provided the two integrals on the right side uh, exist. Uh, again, uh, you have to understand what is the meaning of convergent and, and divergent. An improper integral is convergent means that the limit, the limits here exist. Okay? Uh, any questions on this uh, definitions? Uh, here's a. Uh, again, the generally, w what's the meaning of? these integrals. So suppose that the integrand is a positive function. So the graph of f lies above the x-axis. So when we write the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx, what is it giving us? Well, it's giving us the area below the graph of f to the right of a. Area below the graph of f to the right of a. So if I look at the integral of this function from a to infinity, that's what we have. Everybody is okay with that? Uh, another example. Let's look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Remember, we, s we looked at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared, right? That was my first example. Uh, what is this integral? Well, by definition, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx is the limit as t goes to infinity integral from 1 to t of 1 over x dx, right? Now, uh, what's the, what's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Natural log of x. So now I have to plug in t and 1. If I plug in t with t and 1, I get ln of t minus ln of 1. What is ln of 1? 0. What's the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t? limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t. What's the graph of ln of t? It goes to infinity, right? As t goes to infinity. So this limit is in fact infinity. Okay. So what does it mean? Well, it means that the area below the graph of 1 over x to the right of 1 has infinite area. Okay. So this integral is divergent. This integral is divergent. Here's the comparison between the two. 
integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared and the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x. Notice that in this case, I have finite area to the right of 1. In the second case, I have infinite area to the right of 1. Why is that the case? Why is that the case, you think? Well, the reason is uh, that this function goes to 0 much earlier, much faster than the other function. Okay, so it it goes to it gets closer and closer to zero or much earlier. Okay, whereas this guy, relatively, it doesn't approach zero that much earlier. Okay. So that's why you have this uh, difference. Okay, any question? Last slide, yes. Uh, if I ask you. Uh, what's the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x cubed dx? What would you say? Is it convergent or divergent? Instead of, so we looked at 1 over x, we looked at 1 over x squared, right? So I'm asking, what's the, integ uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x cubed dx? Is that convergent or divergent? Convergent, convergent right? Because it's actually going to zero even faster than 1 over x squared, right? So it should be, it should be uh, convergent. So g generally, we could say this. Uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the power p, p is a constant. This integral is convergent whenever p is greater than 1. But it is divergent whenever p is less than or equal to 1. Am I making sense? So the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p uh, is a convergent whenever p is greater than 1, and it is divergent when p is less than or equal to 1. We saw some examples of this, right? When we look at the case when p is 1, divergent, we look at the case when p is 2, it was convergent. Right? So generally, you could say this. Generally, you could say this, and I'll let you come up with a proof of this on your own, okay, it's pretty easy. Just integrate that, you'll see that that's the case. Is everyone okay? But we are going to use this fact a lot of the, a, a lot in the, in section 11.3. Everybody's okay? Any questions on this? All right, uh, a comparison test for improper integrals. So what this is saying <coughs> is that Suppose that f of x is larger than g of x, and uh, both of them are non-negative functions, okay? f of x is larger. And this inequality is hold as long as x is bigger than a, let's say. Uh, so now we are looking at the integral of f of x and g of x from a to infinity. So what we are saying here, that if the integral from a to infinity of f of x is convergent, then the integral of g of x should, should also be convergent from a to infinity. Because g is, uh, g is smaller than f. Now, the second one says, if the integral from a to infinity of g of x dx is divergent, that would imply that the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is divergent as well because f is in fact bigger than g of x, right? So if g of x is divergent, right, then the integral of f of x would be, uh, you see, if you have a positive integrand, right, when I say that the integral from a to infinity of f of x is divergent and f is, uh, f is a positive function, it means that when I write it as a limit, the limit is in infinity, okay? The limit is infinity. So that's why we can say a and b. Everybody realizes what's expressed by A and B. Any questions on A and B? So again, if the if the uh, if the bigger function is uh, if the integral from A to infinity of the bigger function is convergent, then the integral of the smaller function is convergent as well. This is saying if the integral of the smaller function is divergent, then the integral of the bigger function is divergent as well. 
Uh, let, let's look at a, a picture of getting, trying to understand what's going on. Remember f and g are both non-negative functions. The graphs will, both graphs will be above the x-axis. f is bigger, so the graph of f lies above graph of g, right? And we are integrating from a to infinity. We know what is expressed by that. The integral from a to infinity gives you the area below the graphs to the right of a, right? Which area is bigger? The area below the graph of f is bigger, right? So is it, is it clear to say that, hey, if, if the, uh, if the uh, so area below the graph of, so if I say that the area below the graph of f is finite, wouldn't that mean that, wouldn't that imply that the area below the graph of g is finite as well? That's what we are saying. If the integral of f from a to infinity is finite, then, then the integral from a to infinity of g is also finite, right? That's what we are saying. What's the other one? If I say that the area below g is infinite, if the area below g is infinite, then the area below f is what? It's infinite. So that's what b says. b says if the, inti if the integral of g uh, from a to infinity is uh, infinite, or uh, that, that's divergent, then the integral of f is divergent as well. Am, am I making sense? Um, okay, so let's use this and look at a question. Uh, let's say I want to show that the, uh, that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is convergent. I want to show this integral is convergent. Now, the problem with this is that, is that um, if I try to show that this is convergent directly, I won't be able to do it because we don't know an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. Okay? Try to think about finding an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. Soon you'll realize that you can. Okay? So you can't find an antiderivative of e to the negative x squared. So what do we do? Well, we are going to compare this with, uh, with another uh, integral. So first of all, notice uh, that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx, I can write it as integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x squared dx plus the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. So first of all, we are going to break up the integral at 1. Now obviously this integral exists, right? Because this is, the this is the integral of a continuous function over a finite interval. And we know that for a continuous function, this type of integrals always exist, right? Now, how about this one? Integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. We want to know whether that is convergent. So here's what's going on then. Uh, compare the function e to the negative x squared with e to the negative x. Which one is bigger? e to the negative x squared bigger or e to the negative x is bigger when x is larger than 1? If x is larger than 1, uh, which one is bigger? e to the negative x squared or e to the negative x? e to the negative x. Why is that the case? Why is that the case? Uh, let me, so we are saying, well, we have that x is larger than 1, right? If x is larger than 1, uh, which one is bigger, x squared or x squared or x? Which one is bigger? x squared is bigger, right? So then if you multiply both sides by negative, then you have negative x squared is less than negative x, right? Now remember the e function, e to the x function, that's an increasing function, right? So if negative x squared is less than negative x, then e to the negative x squared will follow the same inequality, right? This is because the, e, the exponential function is an increasing function. So if negative x squared is less than negative x, then e to the negative x squared is less than e to the negative x. You, you guys get that? Everybody's okay? 
So then I could say, um, I could say, because I could say e to the negative x squared is less than e to the negative x, now I want to, come, I want to understand whether the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x is convergent. Well, let's see. What's the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x? dx. Well, this would be the limit as t goes to infinity, integral from 1 to t of e to the negative x dx. And uh, what's the antiderivative of e, of e to the negative x? Antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x, right? Negative e to the negative x, you guys realize that? And then you're going to plug in, and if you plug in, you're going to get exactly what I have. e to the negative 1 minus e to the negative t. And then what's the limit? The limit is just e to, e to the negative 1, right? Because the limit of e to the negative t as t goes to infinity is 0. So, um, uh, those are the graphs of e to the negative x squared and e to the negative x, okay? And see that after 1, which one is bigger? The blue one is above the red one, right? And we are saying that to the right of 1, then, the integral of e to the negative x is finite, right? The <coughs> integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative x dx, that's convergent, so it's a finite. So that tells you that the, because e to the negative x squared is smaller, e to the negative x squared is smaller than e to the negative x to the right of 1. On the right side of 1, which one is bigger, e to the, ne e to the negative x. So if the area below e to the negative x is finite, then the area below the e to the negative x squared would be finite as well. So now we could say that the integral from a 1 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is convergent, which would say that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is convergent as well. Is it, did that make sense? All right, now there are other kinds of improper integrals. There are other kinds of improper integrals. Uh, these, are, these are known as the discontinuous, uh, uh, continuous integrands. Meaning that you have finite intervals, but the integrand has, a, the integrand has an infinite discontinuity at a point. What happens at that time? How do you integrate functions? Uh, uh, how do you integrate in those cases? I am not going to go over the, the rest of the slides. You are going to read them on your own, for your own interest, but I'm not going to be asking any questions from, from those slides. All we need in 11.3 are the slides that I covered. The slides that I covered, those are the ones that I need in 11.3, so I'm not going to bother with the other ones. Uh, but if you are interested, you should read them on your own. Yeah. Do we have a quiz tomorrow? Because I am going to give you a take-home quiz, I said, right? Tomorrow. And uh, you're going to bring it back on, uh, on Tuesday. Yeah.